and a sibling with a child with a disability come and share their story. Because we can learn so much from each other. That's what this conference is all about. You know, we can bring you all the presenters in the world from education and all the programs or anything, but you know, the best information that parents can learn is the information that they learn from each other. So this morning, I think we have the pleasure of welcoming to El Paso a family, the Thompson family, and uh, uh, Mr. Brad Thompson will be doing the presentation this morning, and also his son will do it. But at this time, I'd like to recognize the whole family and welcome you to El Paso, and thank you so much for being here. If you would stand for a quick, a quick second, and let's give him a, a big welcome to El Paso. I'm not going to spend any time telling you much more about him because I know Mr. Thompson, that's his presentation. So at this time, let's welcome Mr. Brad Thompson. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I want you to know that um, we are grateful for the opportunity. And, and every opportunity that we have, we are always humbled. Because I, I have to tell you that I wouldn't have chosen this life. I would have never chosen uh, to have a child with a special need or a disability. And yet, 22 years ago, Haley showed up in my life. And uh, because of that, I've learned some of the most important lessons uh, that there are to learn in life. One of the things that Haley has taught me to do is, is how to love people because she loves everyone. If you see her today and you don't get a hug from her, it will be because you didn't let her, not because she didn't want to. Uh, I've learned how to forgive from Haley. Haley will say it's okay before you can get I'm sorry out of your mouth. I'm still working on this one, but Haley lives a stress-free life. She doesn't worry about anything. Now, she gives me and Karen lots of reasons to worry, but she never does. Um, we are blessed to actually get to be here today as a family. Uh, sometimes Haley speaks with me, sometimes she doesn't. Um, but there was a time several years ago that I asked Karen to let Haley go with me to Denver, Colorado, uh, where I was supposed to speak at a futures planning conference. And Justin had something going for the weekend, so the four of us couldn't go and Karen started worrying about that. She said, Brad, I'm not sure that, that it's okay for Haley to go with you by yourself. She said, you know, sometimes you get to talking to people and you forget that you have parent responsibility. She said, that's okay in Canyon, Texas, where we live, population 10,000. But in downtown Denver, if Haley gets away from you, that could be bad news. And so I, I promised and begged and did all of the things that I could do to try to uh, get her to trust me to be the responsible, mature one. And finally, she, she agreed to let me go. I think she kind of saw it as a respite weekend as well. So Haley goes with me to Denver, and I talk and I beg, and I, and I offer her all kinds of bribes to get her to kind of stay with me. And we get to the day of our presentation, and we go to our room, and I go to the front of the room, and I start to set things up. And Haley's waiting at the door, and one of her jobs is to hand out the notes to our presentation. Well, as I start to set up, I start to recognize that it's very quiet in the back of the room. And when I turn around, I notice that Haley's not there. I would love to tell you that my first thought was, where's Haley? But it was not. It was, what am I going to tell Karen? <laughs> so I run out the room and I look one direction, it's just a hallway. I look the other direction and it's uh, where the big exhibit hall is. And so I start to go that way. And before I see anything, I hear this little voice. And the little voice is saying, my dad is Brad Thompson. He is speaking in room 102 and you have to be there. It was Haley promoting my uh, class for the day. Needless to say, with that introduction, uh, we had standing room only in our classroom that day. I think more to see what was going to happen than to hear what was going to happen. And so we taught for our hour and 15, 20 minutes. And at the end of it, I'm standing at the front of the room and I'm talking with a couple of people. And I look to the back of the room where Haley's sitting. And there's this long line of people waiting to talk to her. And i got to tell you, my feelings were hurt just a little bit. 
I did most of the work, and everybody wants to talk to her. And then I get interested. I, I wonder what she's telling them. And so I mosey my way to the back, and I notice that people have their conference notebooks open. And so I say, Haley, what are you doing? She says, I'm giving my autograph. <laughs> sure enough, she was. H-A-L-I 655-9432. My home phone number. So, and she was so proud because she had just learned that. I, I hope that today is a great opportunity for you. I, I started by saying that I'm humbled to be here, and I really am. I, I'm amazed that anybody would come to, to listen to me talk. Uh, but what I want you to gain from this session more than anything, um, I'm a person of faith. And I believe with all my heart that God made Haley Thompson exactly the way she was supposed to be. And if that is so, then he has a grand purpose for her life. My job as her dad is just to help her get there, right? Okay. I want you to see the big and beautiful dream that is out there for your children today, right? If I could move, change the slide, please. You, that's Haley, and that's why we're here today. I can't imagine that I would have ever been asked to speak at a gathering like this if Haley hadn't shown up in my life. But if you roll it one more, what I want you to remember is, if you will change the slide, please. Yeah, that she's not alone, that she comes in a family. And I think so many times, and Justin's going to spend some time talking about this in his breakout session after lunch. So many times we get so focused on the special needs of our kids with special needs. And because they're pretty labor intensive sometimes, and sometimes they take a lot of our energy, that we fail to remember that these kids come with families. And that it's equally as important that we take care of brothers and sisters and moms and dads, and that we make sure that we help to support marriages in, in these families. Because if any child needs two parents, it's our children with special needs. It can be hard sometimes. It can be draining. And to have a partner to share this journey with just, uh, is just so, so valuable. I also want to tell you that I'd love for you to go hear Justin uh, speak today. I also want some people to go in there as spies so that uh, you can come and report to me all of the negative things he says about his dad during that, uh, during that hour and a half. So... Uh, if you'll just let me know and you'll take good notes, uh, I will adjust his inheritance once I get home based on that. Okay. If you would go to the next one, please. In your handouts, uh, you have a copy of, of this uh, slide presentation. And in, on, on the next slide, if you would, yeah, I always have fill in the blanks. Do, you, uh, do we have anybody in here that's one of those detail kind of control people that has to make sure all their blanks are filled in? If you would admit that, raise your hand. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I don't get all the way to the end, I will just tell you what goes in the blanks, okay? But I'm pretty sure I'll make it to the end. Some rules of the game that I really want you to think about. And the first one is that families know best. Okay? Families know best. There's no one on this planet that knows your child better than you do. Okay? No one. And what that means is that in any meeting, whether it's a school meeting or a doctor's office or anywhere you might be, you as mom and you as dad have something to contribute to that meeting. Okay? Now, I know that there can be times when that's very intimidating, that you're sitting in rooms full of people and maybe they have lots of formal education and, and all of those things, but they don't know your child like you do. And so we want you to be encouraged to share what you know because you have pieces of the puzzle. Karen and I have pieces of Haley's puzzle that no one else has. And without our comfort and willingness and ability 
to share those pieces. The people who are trying to help us have their hands tied a little bit. While I believe with all my heart that families know best, I think there's a second part of that. Families don't know everything. Okay? The fact that we know best should give us courage. Remembering that we don't know everything should make us humble. Okay? Haley was blessed to have great teachers and great therapists throughout her school years. And her teachers and her therapists knew more about teaching her to speak and teaching her to read and teaching her math and all of the things that she got at school than her parents did. But none of them knew her as well as we do. So it's important that we remember that we always have something to offer, number one, and, we can, and there's always something that we can learn. And so by being humble, it allows us to be teachable. And when we're teachable, then Haley gets the best possible life. The second thing that I think is a rule of the game that we play is that families must develop the necessary skills to become effective advocates. Okay? It worries me sometimes in the things that I hear people being taught. I can remember being at a different conference, conference and riding the elevator with a lady who, who was asking me about what I was doing, which is parent advocacy at that conference. And, and she said, well, my parent advocacy class is simple. She said, I just tell them to get a lawyer and take them with her. And I said, I'm going to agree to disagree with you on that. Because I think the key to our kids getting the best possible service is for us to build good, healthy, positive relationships with the people that are working with them. Now, I can always fight. And the thing that I know is that if I go looking for a fight, I will always find one, right? How many of you are tired of that? How many of you just get tired of having to fight? What if we had eyes to see how many people are out there who want to help us? Not because the law says they have to. Not because you've threatened them with a lawsuit. But simply because they just love kids like yours. And I wonder how much more peaceful we would be if we really knew how many people just loved our kids. Martin Luther King Jr. said that things that are fought for and taken are usually taken back. Things that are mutually agreed upon last. Think about that. Things that are fought for and taken are often taken back, but things that are mutually agreed upon last. That teaches me that it's very important for us to build relationships and partnerships. That we have a team of people that will lead us to Haley reaching her potential. The next rule of the game is that we must be persistent. Okay? We must be persistent. This is a long journey. Thanks to some incredible health care advances in, in our culture, in our society, we have come to this place where children with special needs uh, will live almost the same length of time as those of us without special needs. What that means is that this is a long journey. 